Ladies and gentlemen, we started this broadcast approximately 5 hours, 47 minutes, and 59 seconds ago. Thank you, all. <laughs> we have made it through 19 teams, and here we are into the grand finals. Give a good hands up for the Rising Taquitos and for Backlash. Backlash! They went out first round and fought all the way through the lower bracket to get here. The bracket of alternate success is absolutely named because they alternatively alternatively successfully got to the grand finals yeah that's right an, an amazing recovery they actually i think went out in second round but still that's several that's more it. games that they have to go i think that they beat blood sports first round um who did we cover the first round we covered risky, risky biscuits. biscuits and dwarves united and then we covered Bye. backlash Backlash versus Shot in the Bullet. Look at you! Upstaging me already. I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just you're gonna was go looking, far. You I was are looking, gonna go far. Aw, thank you. But I love you so much. I was just looking at the bracket right when you said it, so that's the only reason. Oh, all right, so revealed the magician's trick. There you go, there you go. Um, either way, so coming into this one, you might be curious, why is this a game two? Because this is a weighted grand finals, but it's not weighted sets. It has been, as we said, a long time, and this is literally just for seeding points. So it's a weighted best of three, which means coming into this, 1-0 will be the taquitos because they're coming in from the winner's bracket. So that being said, we could have a one-game finish for the Grands, or if Backlash, you know, if they put the pedal to the metal, we could actually bring this to a 1-1 and a game three. We're going to have to find out as game number one is going to be on Sky Temple, Miss Gillyweed. Sky Temple for game one. We've seen it quite a bit today. And uh, we've even seen the Rising Taquitos play those Vikings on the Sky Temple. And we know how tough that one can be. Now, Rising Taquitos do get first pick and first ban as well. Yep, and they're going to say goodbye to the Rupa, to the Witch Doctor. You know, I've actually been, uh, I've been leveling up a Witch Doctor on Diablo 3 at the new season. It's absolutely phenomenal. So Rising yeah. Taquitos, they clearly know all these new strats about Mazebo. <laughs> Uh, but he's a very common band these days. A lot of people really like him. Look at this, though. Backlash is saying, we're on to you. We're banning <laughs> out the Vikings. They did. They banned the Lost Vikings. So, sorry, horse pants. You'll have to play something else this game. So, Rising Taquitos has picked first the Sergeant Hammer. Yes, got a strong first pick. Yeah, right there. Especially on a map where you have to, like, defend the points or everyone's going to be mm -hmm. clustered up. It's a phenomenal pick, and uh, we're going to have to see what kind of supports the Rising Taquitos can put to it. But on the flip side, ETC is going to be stolen out and Vala, a very strong first pick combo, especially knowing that you're probably going up against the Protect the Hammer comp. You take away the ETC, you take away the back end uh, strength buddy of the Vala. It's a good setup for the backlash. For sure. Following that up, we've seen Tassadar and Rhaegar, so pulling out the two supports from Rising Taquitos straight off the bat. We're going to have the full heal from the Ancestral of Rhaegar, and then of course the shield and double healing ward, um, essentially, from Rising Taquitos. So it's going to be really strong. Absolutely. Now, do you know what would actually tickle me pink here? If the Rising Taquitos, they got the Rhaegar Tassadar dream. If they go Illidan Uther, I think, <laughs> I think it would be a very interesting split of protect the Illidan and just leave Hammer in the back mm -hmm. <laughs> and nobody goes for him. It would be very similar to the, the Viking phenomenon, but we're also going to get a chance to see what else horse bands can play because I don't think, I mean, I've seen them once with not Vikings. I just don't remember who it was. I think it was Zeratul or something, but um, mm -hmm. it was a very monumentous moment in the amateur league, Gilly. Yeah, I mean, Rising Taquitos is, of course, up one, so they can, uh, they do have the advantage of being able to experiment with their composition a little bit, uh, but we'll have to see. It, it truly is monumentous uh, what uh, Horse Pants will be able to play. Coming in from Backlash, we've got the double support on their side. We've got a Taranda and Malfurion. Taranda again. Mm-hmm. Toronto is back. Toronto plus Vala, I've told you about it before, guys. The Hunter's Mark uh, really makes the damage uh, that Vala puts on the person with the Hunter's Mark. Uh, it makes it skyrocket, of course, while that mark is on. Uh, but we've got the final picks for Rising Taquitos. Well, 
they needed a frontliner, and with an ETC gone, they're going to take away the pressure of the hook and just add it to their own. But once more, somebody that, again, I just continually don't see as a very successful hero as of right now. Miss Jaina is returning to the Sky Temple, so... That's your lineup for the taquitos. It's a tasty one. It is. Uh, I'm interested to see that Jaina, Sergeant Hammer damage combo together. As long as they can keep Jaina alive, and of course the Sergeant Hammer as well. That could be a lot of damage coming out. Uh, but one pick left for Backlash. I'm thinking we'll see another damage dealer. Yep. Uh, any thoughts? What? Who did they just go? Zeratul, right? No, they went Thrall. It could easily be Thrall. Yeah, you're right, it could. Because uh, this is literally the, oh, it's a zero tool today. This is literally though the, the team comp that they just rolled with, but uh, mm -hmm. it looks like it will be the zero tool to finish it up. You know, the, you got the lovers there, the Malfurion and Tyrant. It's some really good synergy for supporting a melee, uh, mm -hmm. but they're gonna go with the Void Prison instead of uh, uh, Earthquake and that Rome. That Rome did so much work early game in the last round. It did, it really did. Mm. There you go, guys. Game number two coming your way. Backlash into Taquitos. The Vikings ban. It's not something you can say every day. <laughs> that is definitely true. But, I mean, if you've got somebody who is just so strong on a hero, and especially a hero that since they're new, a lot of people haven't really figured out fully, I think, ways to counter him, then uh, I, I totally understand uh, that pocket ban uh, to prevent horse pants from just destroying with boats, singing in boats. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm really just waiting for one of those compilations coming out of, of this, uh, Vikings, and the theme song will be Lonely Island, and I'm on a boat. <laughs> I'm on a boat, and... <laughs> <laughs> it it be great. fits so perfectly. You just have a compilation of just all the kills that you've ever seen with the Vikings. And it's, yeah, just put them on a boat. It'll be fun. All right, game is loading up, guys. The Sky Temple, game number two of this grand finals, best of three. Gilly Wade, you're such a trooper. Six hours in, and you're out energying me. <laughs> well, hey, you know, you've you've been uh, having to get up early. Uh, I got to sleep in a little bit. I did have to pack. I'm going on vacation Friday, but uh, I did get some sleep at least. So that's good. I hope you have yourself an enjoyable vacation. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All you're going to be thinking about is boats and Vikings, though. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I will be missing <laughs> playing Heroes. I can definitely say that's a fact. I've been playing a ton over the past couple of weeks, uh, as these uh, players probably have. So, in the blue base, that's how I will cover there. We've got Team Backlash with Disclaimer, Jumping Duck, Sky, Wada Frock, and Baby Nova. So on the flip side, the team that uh, has not yet been defeated it is the Rising Taquitos. They were number two seed last week, and here they are looking to solidify their number one this week. Hans, Belfre, uh, Horse Pants, who is on the Jaina, not who I expected, uh, Mistakes, <laughs> and a Rise Chicken to be doing the task start into the bottom lane. So what kind of party lanes do we got going on? It's actually Malfury and Tyranda top. That's up against Hans, and that's likely not to be a kill anytime soon. The more interesting part of it is this mid with Belfry, the Jaina, and of course, Miss Sergeant Hammer. Yes, definitely. We've got Sky and Waterfrog setting up for a... Uh... That's awesome. They were setting up for a game for sure, but they got detected from uh, Jaina, who, would, who was watching. I think it was Jaina who threw something into that bush, and uh, they were, they'll have to step back. They were not able to secure any gank on uh, rising taquitos today. Uh, it was actually likely just the mines that we just saw just Oh, now. was it? Yeah, well, that reveals their Uh, realize. well, maybe. No, it won't. Hans, however, has revealed that Zeratul's top. Uh, <laughs> but the Tyrando walked into the bush as well. That's why they activated it. And, and uh -huh. kind of it's a very good early warning system for Sergeant Hammers. Highly recommend throwing your mines into the bushes mm -hmm. associated with your lane. Uh, so that you do know when there is a danger afoot. This three-man gank on top of Hans uh, was enough for the kill. And you can see Rhaegar, he actually cycles into the top to continue soaking. So the experience difference, really not that big a deal. But here comes the temples, and you can see everybody's coming out to the races for this one. 
Everybody's coming to mid, of course. The hook does not catch anybody. Uh, for now, we've got Backlash who's holding that mid, but of course, Rising Taquitos will be coming in to try to deal something. Uh, possibly trying to get a pick off with either the Stitches or, of course, Sergeant Hammer doing a lot of damage. Waterfrog has to go away. Jumping Duck is moving away as well. He's already getting low, getting very low. Stitches is running after him, wants to catch him, and they easily push away. Catches yep. Sky with the clutch hook and Taronda. He got a little revenge on Taronda there, that Stitches did. Yes, he did. <laughs> yep, and they are taking that mid temple. Now I'm curious to see who's actually going to be rotating to the top first. It does look like the Taquitos, or sorry, Backlash is going to be uh, making the first move up to it. But uh, there goes mid. All the shots are now done. And once again, if you can actually get the mid in all the shots, you will gain more experience than this first top one, simply because you're going to trade out. The difference is the top kills out a pool, whereas the mid actually trades out the tower. So a little bit of nugget of information for you guys. You can take into your solo queue. The problem is Red wasn't able to actually finish off or you know pick up all of the shots there in the mid. So now <laughs> still five on five into the stop. Khan's got a pull on stitches but, or on um, Zero Tobu. He was able to get away, but Sergeant Hammer is doing so much damage. Uh, probably going to be able to get away. Yep, Jumping Duck just barely gets away. Rudderfart coming back in, but look at all the heroes. Yeah. Uh, and actually Stitches grabs him that time. You will pay. You will pay. And uh, all of Takedo is still very healthy. Jumping out coming in to try to do some damage on Jaina, but the shield from Tastar will protect her. And they're going to be able to uh, get this temple for now as well. So a lot of temple gain, and look at that level gain to go with it. Level six to yes. five, and uh, actually still expanding as all these shots are still yet to even expand. Uh, so once once again, the Rising Taquito is showing us a very strong early to mid game and taking the first set of objectives. They're now spread out and soaking as well. They're about to hit seven before we even hit six here from Backlash. That's, uh, that's a problem for Backlash because they're going to be down to talent here now for any kind of big fights in the next little bit. Yeah, for sure. We've got the level seven talents up. Um, have you seen anything crazy so far in the talents? Yeah, this Jaina. <laughs> oh, what's going on, Jaina? Ice Lance. Ice Lance. Okay. Woo, horse, you're horse, right. What is Horse Pants showing us today? Well, right now, it's three Frost Bolts in a row. Uh, oh. The only time I've really seen, like, three in a row of anything was uh, Mirrodin comes to mind with a sledgehammer. Yes. And, you know, that is... Uh, De that's obviously like a skill shot, so he's got to have a lot of um, faith in his abilities to land those skill shots. A lot of confidence. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. We also got a mule being pulled down by Tassadar. Mule is traditionally a strong pick, but he did get nerfed this patch. Uh, the duration was basically cut in half. You can't have more than one mule on the same building anymore. Mm -hmm. But on this map, because the tributes don't actually AoE anything, you can put down a mule on the target, and the, the, tribute, uh, the temples actually can't even do anything about the mule. So it does have a special uh, place here on Sky Temple. Yeah, Tassadar will lose out on a little bit of uh, damage by getting that mule, but of course the, uh, the amount you'll make up by keeping your structure alive is so important. Now if you notice, uh, our rising tequilas are already sieging up on bot. They're getting ready for that bot temple, which should be pushing, uh, starting up at any time. Meanwhile, it seems like Backlash knows that it's going to be a problem. So instead, they're pushing up top with their bruisers. And we've seen this trade off multiple times tonight. If you're not even going to bother with the bottom, you pick up the bruisers and you just push top. It will end up being a trade. Uh, and then you're free to kind of try to contest the rest. Traditionally, you still lose out on the trade, but it keeps you at least within a, a respectable margin of experience. Looks like we've got a mule for um, uh, Malfurion as well. So mules on both sides. Red team has picked up the first tempo, so that's a little bit more experience for Taquitos. They are actually running up, and uh, Backlash is still pushing. What do you think about this decision? Well, there's nothing else for them to defend right now. <laughs> Sure. Although that being said, you know, both sets of uh, the Siege Giants in the bottom lane are now going to be pushing up. That's something they should keep in mind, but they do have their heroics and pushing up all the way to that uh, 
that gate, that keep gate, that's both towers. It's a good chunk of extra experience, but it also means later on, some of those top temples, it's just far less uh, ammo that has to be expended on those towers. So I kind of like it. Awesome. Uh, well, that Sergeant Hammer actually abandoned that bottom temple. Um, so now there is actually the possibility for everyone to try to contest it. It does seem like Backlash is maybe starting to head that way once they clean up. And then, of course, Rising Taquitos is trying to hurry and get in and siege up. It's really important that they can try to um, get in there because, like we talked about this bot temple, it's it's so difficult. The Hans gets caught out of position. Jumping Duck keeping the body block on him. They're going to be able to take him out. And uh, that's a quick pick for Backlash. Yeah, it's a quick pick, but it's also quick thinking there. Mistakes just immediately he thrustered in and was able to do a concussive blast on top of the strafing Vala, which interrupted her out of it. So yeah, they did lose out that uh, stitches, but in, in terms of the overall damage, stopping out that strafe was, was a very good move. Fortunately, it just doesn't really seem to be a follow-up action that's available here to the Taquitos. So they're going to drop a little bit here in terms of the experience, and it does actually look like Backlash will finish off all the shots here in this bottom temple. Yeah, it seems like Taquitos are going to try to push mid, maybe get down the tower or even the fort, or at least put some damage on it. But we've got three members uh, coming up to contest and put some pressure on. Uh, Robert Brock getting a lot of, everyone taking a lot of damage from that piece of bile, and Tyronda actually goes down. Now we've got the, uh, the, Mosh pit happening from Jumping Duck. Zeratul's too low to do much on it, and he gets taken out. And uh, the hook what? on Disclaimer from Hans. And Hans quickly finishes uh, taking out the Malfurion. Three heroes down, and they'll definitely get the fort now. That hook. That was, uh, that was a great A hook there, Hans. Good to see your Blitzkrieg practice has uh, definitely paid off. But... <laughs> There goes the fort, as you said. So not only do we have the bottom down uh, due to Merc pressure and a few temples, but mid is also now dead and dusted. A little bit uh, too fast on the respawns. I don't think that uh, they're confident enough to take the boss unimpeded yet. But in terms of the experience, that will put us right back almost to a level above the backlash here from Red. So 13 talents abound. Don't really see anything uh, super weird going back and forth. Shrink Ray on... Tassadar. We don't have a Shrink Ray on the flip side. As I said, we already talked about the mules. The the triple Frostbolt build from Jaina. She, you know, last time we saw Jaina, she died, what, six times in a row? <laughs> yeah, she died uh, uh, quite a bit. I haven't really seen that this time. Horse Pants has been uh, keeping her fairly safe behind a lot of the front line that they have available to them. Yeah, she hasn't died at all, actually. Only Hans has died on, on the side feeder. of Rising Go back Tiquitos. to League of Legends. <laughs> How me. dare you. All right, so it does look like Backlash is starting this boss. And meanwhile, Temples are also activating in 10 seconds, but Rising Taquitos are not going to let them have this boss. Uh, Waterfrog has to blink away because Hans gets the uh, pull on him and the uh, Backlash is forced to leash the boss. They know if they start fighting. That thing does so much damage. Oh, Waterfrog catches four team members in that in the, the mosh pit to follow, but they're able to get away, kind of. Gina goes down to the strength, and there's the mosh pit. Uh, Belfrush trying to run away. He dies, and now Malfurion follows suit. Uh, Arise Chicken is trying to get away, is able to activate his dimensional shift, uh, but Waterfrog is on the chase, catches him with a cleave, and uh, three for one. Uh, in favor of Backlash, as the temples are starting up. It was a slight misplay from Sky, went a little bit too early with the Lunar Flare, but they were able to still follow it up with a monster mash. And uh, as I said, three for one by the end of it. Some really good plays coming up from Backlash. They did start this boss relatively early. I mean, the shrines came up and they're starting out the boss. A disastrous team fight means that they're going to lose it. But instead, they're the ones actually coming out ahead. So they do gain the boss. They do actually take down this bottom uh, temple. And sure, yeah, they're losing out on the top, but it's a, still a much better trade overall for backup. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's so difficult. You talked about Trauma um, missing just by a hair, that, that stun on top of... Um, uh, what was the stun originally that started? 
Void prison. Void prison, that's right. Uh, it's so difficult to try to uh, match up all of those sort of group stuns like mosh pit and everything, getting them all timed out. So uh, that's definitely one thing that you uh, you see people working on a lot when they're getting their teams together and working on team comps. Yeah, you can definitely see the fluidity of some of the wombos depending <laughs> on you know who their opponents are, how long the team has been together. Uh, if you see a hook immediately followed up by a lunar flare, you know that these guys got some kind of big wombos down. So it's a, a very scary thought having a Tyranno with the stitches, but fortunately, we're not seeing that this game. Either way, level 16 talents are here from both sides, and I'm a little surprised that we actually don't have imposing presence on both sides. We do have it on the ETC, however, from Backlash. Yep, we've got sing double bombs, so we're just seeing Zerto continue to get more and more bombs. Uh, and he's trying to come in and tr probably trying to get a good Void Prison. Everyone's staying really spread out for Taquitos, um, but unfortunately, they are losing their Giants, and Hans is not able to grab anybody with the hook. Uh, but still staying spread out, doing a good job of not getting caught in that Void Prison. Hmm. Losing out the Giants is, you know, it's a slight annoyance. It's not game ending at all. I mean, mm -hmm. Horse Pants literally just murdered them by himself. <laughs> Fun things about, uh, you know, the chill. Really can actually lead into some insane burst late game with the Jaina. Problem is, she's usually just never alive to see it. In fact, she took uh, Northern Exposure after the sprint. So we're even now dealing with vulnerabilities being applied to the opponents. So this is uh, scary for both teams because this is the, the area of death once more. They're coming back into it. Hans gets himself that ancestral healing. There goes the Void Prison. Only does hit one. Lodgerfuck has uh, to get really just out of dodge. He was a big target there, but Hans is the, the one that actually did. There goes the Tassadar, but it's a one, two, three hat trick going back and forth. Backlash now able to secure the quad with the death of Sergeant Hammer. And are they going to try to chase down the fight dog? No, they're just going to go straight for Temple and uh, look to push down this bottom keep. Uh, yeah, with the damage from Vala plus, of course, uh, the uh, damage from the temple, which just destroyed the mid fort of Rising Taquitos. Uh, they could definitely see a keep here. There's still everyone down except Backlash for a few more seconds on Rising Taquitos team. So Nova just trying to put in as much damage as she can before she has to get out and save herself. Yeah, but there should be more than enough ammo. Yeah, there's more than enough ammo to take down this keep. It is now toast, starting to work on the mid turrets. And uh, that's actually going to be another chunk of experience into the pocket here at Backlash. So they've taken the experience lead. They've had some really good fights here in the mid to late game, which will put them in a better advantage. Again, if they can win this out, we're going to a game three. The game three dream grand finals for seeding points. And, uh, you know, Belfry, he was the lone survivor of that fight. And eventually he took the bruisers. But you now everyone's just going to try to reorient and uh, get their head in the game for this next one. Mm -hmm. They've got to deal with the uh, sieges, which are pushing on bot. Uh, of course, you have to take care of those now, especially because the core is vulnerable there on the bot lane, which might make uh, this boss, which is coming up in 50 seconds, extra important. Um, of course, you mentioned the experience lead. Uh, Backlash is only one level away from getting those uber important level 20 uh, storm talents. Uh, so we'll see if Mistax is Mistax. <laughs> Rising Taquitos can uh, try to start to catch up with experience. Yeah, I did the same thing when I saw him the first night. <laughs> Mistax. Like, I, uh, I was looking right at him and was just like, I'm going to say whatever I'm looking at. <laughs> like Mountain Douchebag a little bit earlier. It's just like Mountain <laughs> Douch. Oh, oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it, yeah, yeah. I just call him mistakes and when he dies, mistakes are made. I like he, seems, it. he doesn't seem to mind. He actually quite likes it. Fun. Blue, kind of clamoring now for a little bit more experience. They really want this 20 before a fight because that will put them in just such a massive position. But they're also, I think, they're, are they going to bait this? Are they going to bait a boss? Mm, it's looking like they want to, but with the temples now activated, they're just going to go head up to the mid temple and. I'm not sure what Rising Taquitos will try to do. They are down a level. They're not down by talents. 
Um, they're definitely waiting. Waterfrog trying to come in to catch somebody out. Immediately dimensional shift from Tassadar, but he's missing. He's definitely out of the fight for a bit. Uh, Disclaimer gets pulled by Stitches, but he's able to get away. So far, no kills. Yeah, they're just going to reset and look for cooldowns. There's no heroics used there, so that's a positive point to both teams. And <gasps> that's going to be a hook on top of Baby Nova if they can take her down. Doesn't look like they actually had the positioning to pick up on the rest of that Vala. If they were able to insta-give the Vala, that could have been uh, a huge swing there. But as it is, Hook's just now down. Here comes the Bile. We spread all over this point. A three-man Void Prison. Here goes the ETC. He's looking for that uh, Mosh Pit, but a great Concussive Blast actually stopped him dead in his tracks. There goes the Vala. Without this Mosh, I'm not entirely too sure we got the Lockdown to deal with this comp. From the rise of Taquitos, they're coming in. Here goes the there goes the Jaina. So they actually do equalize out the kills in terms of the DPS. Jumping Duck does have that Mosh ready to go, but his follow-up is just so much weaker without that ranged DPS. And now it's even the uh, Zeratul. He's going to get chased down. He unfortunately wormholed right into a tank, and it's a two-for-one trade for the Taquitos. Taquitos did a great job there, avoiding all of the pitfalls, you know, the Void Prison and the Mosh Pit. They were staying spread out and did an awesome job of not ending up clumping. And the, all those three people got caught in the Void Prison initially. You were right. The tank had such an awesome blast to get Mosh Pit, uh, mosh pit away, uh, ETC away, and that uh, that really changed that team fight for them. And this is the problem with the Mosh. You know, the, the one second or so startup time that it takes in order to actually cast it has been countered so many times tonight. Uh, and adding a 10 second cooldown in the heat of battle for a group wide AoE stun is it's, it's a death sentence in most cases. This is why you don't see Chen played out uh, with Elemental Spirits anymore. That's why the only Chen builds are Wandering Keg. Because if you go in and you use that as a second life bar, and you get stunned out of it. It's 10 seconds before you can do anything else, and you just kind of end up regretting the choice. <laughs> For sure. Uh, we did see Backlash trying to take uh, the, the boss, and actually everyone from Takios came down from the top temple. They do not want to let uh, the Backlash get this boss. They don't have a keep on bottom, so it's really important that they do not let Backlash take this boss. Uh, they're posturing. Backlash still doing damage. It's going to go down. The Starfall is dropped. A Rice Chicken Dimensional shifts in, but he is going to get pushed out. And Backlash grabs the boss. Han Solo goes down to, uh, to something there. I think maybe uh, ETC. Horse Pants is the next to drop to um, Zeratul. And the uh, Mosh Pit, followed by the Tyrande stun. The stakes is going nowhere. Thrusters or no, and only Belfry is left. Will the dog be able to escape? I, I don't think escape is really an issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's more about can he defend? Because we saw this before. We saw a 30 minute golem literally walk up to core and get the kill by itself. Right now there's no defenders and the rising taquitos are gonna drop their first game as Rhaegar ties the pressure in this week two amateur series and that means we're going to game three miss kelly Lee. match point final game of the grand finals guys i am pumped this look at awesome. all this wonderful casting you get to do on your first night i know i'm so excited i got so lucky <laughs> oh man i wouldn't have expected um backlash you know, to be honest, you know, they came all the way, they dropped out early, they came all the way through the bottom, and the Rising Taquitos just looked unstoppable, so Backlash actually coming out with a victory here on Sky Temple is, is rather huge for them. Yeah, that's crazy. They were just doing such a great job of trying to make sure they got those favorable engagements between the Mosh Pit and the Void Prison, mm -hmm. and that last engagement, they, they knew that the boss would be end of game if they could get it, and uh, so did Rising Taquitos. They both, everything mattered about that boss and uh, they were able to secure the win. Absolutely, which means game three hype as we're gonna set that up because we are a little bit strapped for time. Somebody here apparently takes care of puppies for a living and they have 13 newborn puppies that they gotta go smother with love. So 
We're going to get it going and smother this last cast with all of our love. So guys, do stick around because we love you all and we love you for tuning in and watching and supporting and playing and not hating on my hat. So good on you. <laughs> See you in a few.